Hey guys. I want to talk about why the thousand year reign had to be between 66 and 70 AD. Now I'm not going to use a bunch of Bible scriptures. I imagine that I'm talking to people who already know the Bible. So if there's anything you think I said wrong, just take what I said and look it up yourself. But this is just uh, giving you the story and the reason why this had to happen then. And you can also do your own study to see that there was no word for millennia in the Greek whenever they translated and decided to make the Greek word a thousand years there was actually arguments over what it should be translated as so but they came after the fact and after Jesus Christ had already returned so you can imagine if you're with in mind if the translators of the Bible are thinking that Christ has not returned yet it's going to cause them to make certain decisions on their translation because they're coming after Christ already returned and thinking he has not returned. So this is why you get words like earth that should have been translated as land, you know, in the book of Revelation and other places. But, <clears throat> alright, Jesus had to reign, and what was Jesus going to do whenever he was reigning? He told the high priest that he, the high priest would see him coming in the clouds. And this was him coming in the glory of God, because the glory cloud would sit over the temple of God and speak to the children out of the cloud. This is how God always spoke to people in the Old Testament. So Jesus coming in the clouds was for that. But there was the first fruits unto God that followed the Lamb whithersoever they went. The first fruits unto God in Revelation chapter 14 is talking about the children of Israel, the 144,000. Now whenever Jesus was there, he said that the judgment must first start at the house of God. Peter reaffirmed this that the judgment must first start at the house of God, and that was the time that the judgment was going to start. He gave twelve apostles twelve thrones and said, Whenever I sit in my throne in my kingdom, you shall be given twelve thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Okay, but he didn't sit on his throne until he returned. He said in Matthew 25, When, I, when the Son of Man shall return, and all his holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Alright, so he doesn't, he can't reign while Satan is still reigning. And Satan is in heaven until 66 AD. The war in the time of the Gentiles where they would trample the city underfoot was 42 months. You can read that in Luke where Jesus said that this would be the times of the Gentiles and they would trod in the city underfoot. Uh, he didn't say 42 months there, but he said that they would be sold into slavery and killed by the sword, the Jews would. And he said there would be great wrath upon that people so he told the believers to get out of Judea whenever they see the armies come to Jerusalem. You know, he said, one of these days armies are going to come and can pass thee about on every side and lay thee even with the ground, right? So he told them to flee Judea. And what happened was the glory cloud, if you read people like Josephus and uh, Tacitus, is that how you say it? Tacitus? And they mentioned that a voice came up in the temple whenever the armies came in 66 and said, told people to get out of the temple and that the glory cloud moved off of the temple and went into the mountains. Well, what did the believers do? They were told by Jesus to flee into the mountains. Okay, The Gentiles weren't the ones fleeing into the mountains here. This was Judea. They were told to get out of Judea. It was the Jews because there would be great wrath upon that people. So in 66, the armies come, the believers get out but they got out for 1,260 days. If you read under the sixth seal, that's whenever they said, let the mountains and rocks fall on us and cover us and hide us from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come, and hide us from him that sitteth on the throne. This is the first time that Jesus had sat on the throne, was the sixth seal. They see Jesus sitting on the throne. Well, his wrath is coming, but his wrath was going to last until he destroyed Israel. Okay, so, <clears throat> In chapter 12 of Revelation, it tells us all these things perfectly. Well, let me make that other point. How he said that these would be the times of the Gentiles. Well, if you read Revelation chapter 11, he says that the Gentiles, these would be the times of the Gentiles, and they would trod in the city underfoot 42 months. So for 42 months was the times of the Gentiles, and that is how long the war was, which is also equivalent to 1,260 days. All right, <clears throat> so the Jews flee into the mountains, and you read Revelation chapter 12, and this is what happens. Also under the sixth seal, the stars of heaven fell. And that is talking about Satan. This is an analogy for Satan. 
You read chapter 12 in Israel, the woman clothed with the sun with 12 stars. That's the 12 tribes of Israel. And you can read in Genesis where Joseph has his dream and relates his brothers as being 11 stars and his mother and father in Israel being the sun and the moon. Okay. So this is Israel, and they travail in birth to bring forth a child, which is to rule the nations with a rod of iron. And the child was caught up to heaven and to the throne. Right? And there was war in heaven, and then Satan and his angels fought against Michael, and Satan was cast out of heaven and his angels. This is in 66 AD. Because he was cast out and he chased the children of God into the wilderness, for 1,260 days, a place prepared for them for 1,260 days from the face of the serpent, right? So, <clears throat> now Jesus says, so there's, there's a whole story here. They're up there, but they were the first fruits unto God. And if you read chapter 14 in Revelation, they were the first fruits. That, that means the first resurrection. These were the first ones, and they followed the Lamb whithersoever he went. Because in Revelation chapter 2, Jesus says, To you that overcome will I give the rod of iron as my Father has given to me, and you shall rule the nations and break them into shivers. So them ruling with him is them breaking him the nations into shivers, which the nations is talking about the nations surrounding Judea, Jerusalem, the Jews, the temple. Just like the temple being Mystery Babylon, who rides on the beast in Jerusalem, right? The temple, being Mystery Babylon, um, they were told to, they were said, Rejoice over her, ye apostles, and ye holy prophets. Well, they died in that time. We know that, I got other videos explaining how Mystery Babylon was that generation, and it was the Jews' temple. But they rewarded her double. See, they were given the rod of iron with Christ. They sat down on the throne with Christ, and they were judging Israel. And they were the first fruits. This would be the first resurrection. Because they were on Mount Zion with Jesus. And following him wherever he went. And this was that 42 month war. All right? They were with Christ following him wherever he went in the spirit. <clears throat> Jesus said that some of them standing there would not taste death. Until they saw the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. To reward every man according to their works. He said that in Matthew 16. And it's not until after the thousand year reign that he rewards every man according to their works. And if you read the thousand year reign, it will tell you that Satan was bound for a thousand years, right? And they were given thrones and the judgment was there, or they were given judgment and they did not take the mark of the beast. That's because they fled Judea. Also in chapter 14, it mentions that the 144,000 were with Christ before the mark of the beast. And they were beheaded and all these things, right? First fruits unto God. They were beheaded, just like it says in Revelation chapter 20 about the thousand year reign. They had not taken the mark of the beast and some of them were beheaded and whatnot. And through great tribulation. So, who was left for them to rule? If they were ruling with Christ, who's left for them to rule after 70 AD? If the temple and the Jewish people have already been destroyed and scattered, and the end has already come, then who was left for them to rule and to break into shivers? Nobody. They were ruling with Christ during his short work, during the time that he reigned, before he delivered the kingdom back up to God, as Paul said. But once the marriage supper of the Lamb came, Christ's work was finished, and the Lord God omnipotent reigns. There's no point in saying the Lord God omnipotent reigneth if he wasn't reigning before that. But everything was delivered into Christ's hands until everything should be put under him. And then he was subject unto the Father, which did put all things under him, and delivered the kingdom back up to God, so that God could be all and in all. And this is why Jesus, sending his angel to John, fell down and tried to worship the angel of Jesus after the marriage supper. And he said, See thou do it not, I'm of your brethren, and of the testimony of Christ. Because at that time, God was already reigning. So Satan is cast down and he chases the children of Israel for 1,260 days, but it tells you right there that he only chased them for a minute. And whenever he went to make war with the remnant of the seed, this is whenever it says, and I saw a dragon stand upon the sand of the sea. Well, Satan was cast down having seven heads and ten horns. 
whenever he took Jesus up in the wilderness, he said, I'll give you all these kingdoms because they've been delivered unto me. Jesus wouldn't do it, right? But Satan was ruling, as Jesus also said, whenever he's going away, I will not talk with you much now because the prince of the world is coming and he has nothing in me. But once he was defeated, Satan and his angels, and were cast down, then Satan was chasing them, and it says the earth helped the woman and swallowed up the flood that Satan cast out of his mouth. See, Satan was put in the thousand-year reign, or else Jesus would not be able to have started reigning. You can't have both of them reigning over Jerusalem at the same time. You can't have God still in the temple, so he who letteth would let until he was taken out of the way, and then that man of sin would be revealed. <clears throat> you couldn't have God still in the temple, and the temple be destroyed. But God left the temple in 66, saying, get out and head into the mountains, right? God leaves the temple and goes, in, uh, goes into the mountains where they have a place prepared with underneath the glory of God and ruling with Jesus Christ. So Satan was thrown into the bottomless pit and he gave his power to the beast. There's no point in Satan giving his power to the beast. Satan having seven heads and ten horns. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a dragon rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns. It actually says, and a dragon stood upon the sand of the sea. And I saw a beast rising up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns. This is because Satan gave his power, which is the power over Jerusalem to the beast, and this was the war. But while well, Satan was going to be cast into the bottomless pit, because they, the ones that were in the beast were already deceived. The ones that weren't were up in the mountains. But at the end of the war, whenever Satan was let out, they gathered all the armies together, the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon. They gathered all the armies together for battle. But the beast and the false prophet were destroyed, <clears throat> uh, and the temple was the last thing to be destroyed. And Satan gathered, it wasn't just that, it was a spiritual battle. It wasn't just the battle on earth, but a spiritual battle. And Satan and his, his angels went up, took him past the camp of the saints about. The camp of the saints were above, see they hadn't taken the mark of the beast. They were standing on a sea of glass, transfigured with Christ. All right, they were transfigured with Christ ruling and destroying Jerusalem, given 12 thrones to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. And he told the churches, them that overcame would sit with him, and he was coming quickly, and his reward is with him. They would sit with him on the throne and be given the rod of iron to break the nations into shivers. And they were doing that, being the first fruits unto God. Hadn't entered heaven yet, but they were placed above the temple, standing on a sea of glass, having the harps of God in their hands, and singing the song of Moses because they had overcome the law. These were Jews, they were singing the song of Moses. Gentiles had nothing to do with Moses. They're not gonna be singing the song of Moses. But those who didn't take the mark of the beast were. So up here, above the temple, where they're destroying it, that's where the camp of the saints was. And Satan's armies went up on the breadth of the earth and can pass the camp of the saints about. But fire came down from God out of heaven and destroyed them. All right. <clears throat> this whole thing, the thousand year reign, had to have been then. Because, like we've mentioned, Jesus couldn't rule while Satan was ruling. So he was cast into the bottomless pit. Jesus was defeating the Jews, the beast. So he was defeating Jerusalem. And the people with him were breaking them into shivers. So that had to have happened. The wrath came on them. And then Jesus tells them to rejoice over her, you holy apostles. Well, who killed the apostles? Nobody today. The apostles don't have beef with any of our countries. Anybody living today, because it was them who killed them. And they rejoiced over her. <clears throat> so the thousand year reign was from 66 to 70 AD. Or, I mean, maybe a few months after 66. I, mean, I don't know, you know, the time frame. But it was in this time period, from 66 to 70 AD, that the thousand year reign would have had to happen, would have had to take place. Because that's whenever Christ was reigning. They were the first fruits, the first resurrection, the first people with God. The second death did not hurt them because the 144,000 were sealed up and out of Judea before and before the second death came. They were already proven faithful to follow the Lamb whithersoever he went, being the first fruits, before the second death even came. So, there's a lot more information on it, but that's, that's enough, I think. What do you think? That's whenever the thousand year reign was, guys. Peace.